Hey everybody, today's video is in Word 2013. We're going to create a form in Word and then we're going to validate one of these fields. Specifically, we're going to require a field. Now, as you can see, my file has been saved as a .docm file. The M stands for macro enabled, and that means that this file will be able to have macros in it, which are the little snippets of code that will, in fact, validate the fields. I also have the developer tab up at the top of the screen. If you don't already have your developer tab open at the top of your screen, what you're going to do is you're going to right click the ribbon and on that context menu that shows up, choose customize the ribbon. When you choose customize the ribbon, a new dialog box opens up and you'll be able to see very quickly and easily that that dialog box has a checkbox over on the right hand side that says developer on it. So go ahead and click that checkbox to make sure that you in fact have the developer tab. <clears throat> So if you do that, if you have a developer tab at the top of the screen, then you can start to talk about creating your form. As you can see, all I've done here is typed in and formatted a title and then made a, a table and put some text content in. And then I went in and I added what are called form fields. Now you add a form field on that developer tab by going to your controls area. And I specifically chose to use my legacy controls because I find that I'm more able to validate these with my uh, VB scripting skills. So I'm adding text boxes, check boxes, drop down menus, things like that from this drop down menu here. And as you can see, it puts these gray boxes into my form. Now once I have my form with all these different fields, I need to start talking about sort of what I do with those fields. As you can see here, if I right click on any of the fields and I choose properties, you'll see the different things that I can change about this field, but very specifically, every form field that you create needs to have a unique name that you have specifically chosen for it. A lot of people just go ahead and leave whatever the default name is, but it's important that you come right here to this bookmark name and <clears throat> notice if I go over to this next one, right click on it and choose properties, I've given that one again a unique name. You need to make sure you know what you named it and why you named it that. It needs to be clear and understandable. And then it's going to make it a lot easier in a little bit here when we use our macros to actually specify what gets validated. Now let's talk about validation next. Validation means that you can't just put anything you want into one of these fields. So for example right now if I wanted to go into the employee name field I might leave that blank and that would be a bad idea, right? Leaving the name field blank would be bad for me so validation would be keeping me from leaving it blank. Business state is an example of something that's already got validation on it because it's a drop down menu. Drop down menus, you have to choose one of the options that are there, so that's a validated field already. Another area where you might already have validation, down here where there's things like number values for total estimated costs, if I right click and choose properties, you'll notice here that I can specify that total costs are not just a text field that could have anything, but it could be a number field and then I could specify the formatting for that number. And so that's a little bit of validation on one of these text boxes, the idea that it must be a number value. Or if I move down to the very next field, you'll see that with date fields, I can do the exact same thing. I can right click on the field, I can choose properties, and then I can tell it instead of being a regular text field to be a date field. And I can specify how that date should look. And that's good, definitely. But there are a lot of other types of validation that are going to be useful to me. And this is where having macros on hand does something very nice for me. So after I've validated these fields by the options that are on my properties menu, if I go back to employee name and I decide that I want to validate this in terms of requiring the field, I'm going to need to use my developer tab. So I go over on the far left hand side of the screen, I click on Visual Basic, and that opens up the panel where my Visual Basic code will go. As you can see here, it's for this document. But rather than typing this up by, uh, by hand, I'm going to open up this text file. For those of you who want the same text file, just go to knacktraining.com slash dl as in download. 
Okay, so you get this text file, and I want to start off at the top. If you notice up at the top of this text, you'll notice that each one of the first few lines starts off with a single quotation mark. These are what are called comments, and it's so that I can communicate to you rather than writing code. So anything that doesn't have a single quote in front of it is the actual code. Anything that does have a single quote in front of it is just me typing you a message. So I'm going to go in here and highlight my script, my little macro code, simply copy it, and then if I want to, I can just paste it directly into my macro text box. Now, if you notice here, the green that shows up is because I have two lines of text that have those single quotes in front of it, so that tells you where your comments are. Anything that's green is just a plain text comment, and anything that's not green is actually the code. So let's start up at the top. It says, exit required field, and then it says, what field are we exiting that's required? And this is where naming our field is so important. I named that one employee name, so I can type in employee name as the name of the field. And it says, if the length of the employee name field is less than one, meaning it's empty, then what I want you to do is go back. So I've got this little command here, I'll say go back to employee name, little message box will pop up. This field is required. Let's specify specifically your name is required. So that's my little message to you. And then right down here, my command will be go back to uh, employee name. And then right down here, the field name here will be set to employee name. And let's uh, go back up to the top and uh, specify that exit required field is actually called exit employee name. So everything has been customized for this field name. If you had named it something different, you'd be typing something different in here. Uh, but if you named it the same thing I did, well then you're all set. At this point, we have a macro that will actually test whether the length of the contents are greater than one. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to Microsoft Word minimize everything else out, right click on the field that we have in question and choose properties. And when we go to exit this field, when we leave the field, what are we going to do? We're gonna say, play that command, exit employee name. Now let's see whether it works or not. Uh, to test whether it works or not, what we're going to do is uh, exit our design mode and we're going to restrict editing on this form. So the only thing you can do is fill out the form field. So we click on restrict editing, click this checkbox over here on the side and specify that it's only form filling that we can do. And uh, then we're going to tell it to start the process of, of protecting this thing. Uh, don't bother with a password while you're practicing, right? You're practicing, so definitely don't lock yourself out. So we just leave the password blank and we hit OK and let's see what happens. I don't type anything into the employee name field. I try to move to the next field over and what happens? it tells me the name field is required. And that's it. Pretty easy, huh?